Hey everybody, today I have a fun way for you to understand for yourself and possibly even other for others how to explain the Bible's worldview. So first, what is a worldview? A worldview is how you view the world. Everyone views the world a little bit differently. It, it depends on where you're born, where you grow up, the, the people who influence your life, the people who are impactful in your life. There's lots of things that affect your worldview. But your worldview matters, and the Bible gives us a worldview of how we can understand the world, which is all up here. I know it's a lot. Let me just explain it really quick. So there's four questions that go with the worldview. The first one is, where do we come from? This, and so this is asking, okay, you know, in the beginning, there had to be a beginning. Like, even if you don't believe that there's a God, somehow the world had and the universe had to start somehow. How did we get here? The next one, what went wrong? We can see all around us that there are a lot of things that are wrong with the world. There's COVID-19, there's drugs, there's all this like unrest, civil unrest. There's lots of things that are wrong with the world and the things that we see. Is there hope? Is there hope? So, you know, the world is, is broken and it's, it seems to not be getting any better, but is there hope for a restored creation at all? And then what does the future hold? This is a big question for a lot of people. They, they want to know, okay, you know, are my kids going to be safe? Is, is this place going to be a safe place for my kids to even grow up? Like, can I, can I trust other people in my life in, in these really difficult questions? All of these things are good questions to ask, and all of these things are questions that people are going to have. And this is how the Bible answers them. So at the, at the bottom, you're going to see where we come from is a question about creation. What went wrong is the fall. Is there hope? That's redemption. And then what does the future hold is reconciliation. Reconciliation is basically two people come together and righting a wrong. So, you know, re racial reconciliation is, you know, taking the wrongs that have been done to the oppressed people in this country and, and making them right, reconciling those differences. So you've got creation, where we come from, fall, what went wrong, redemption, is there hope, reconciliation, what does the future hold? And so this is a quick way for you to understand how the Bible explains each one of these, and there's hand motions too. So I, I thought this was kind of fun. There's hand motions to this too. Okay, so where do we come from? We come from God, that this is the motion. So we come from God, and where do we come from? God created. So we come from God creation, and in, every, in all of creation there was harmony. So there's three hand motions there. So we come from God, and God created everything, and in that creation there was harmony. So in the beginning, there was nothing wrong, and God created the entire world. And when he created the entire world, he said that all of creation was very good, and there was harmony in the world that was created. So there's three hand motions. God, creation, harmony. Cool. So what went wrong? There was disobedience. Disobedience. So that's, that's where you put a little fist. So there was disobedience, and that disobedience has consequences. It's covered your eyes. So there is disobedience from Adam and Eve when they sinned and ate of the tree of the garden of good and evil, and that disobedience has consequences that we all deal with today. And now there is a need in the world. The need is like the praying hands. So you can do this, you can do this, need. So, the fall, there was a disobedience where, again, Adam and Eve decided to do what was wrong, and then everyone after them decided to do also what was wrong. And all their disobedience has consequences. Now we see all this sin in the world. We see, you know, the, the great flood that happened, which was a consequence of, a consequence of sin. And you see throughout the whole Bible story, there's a lot of need that goes on in the world. There's a lot of people who don't have food. There's a lot of people who, you know, need reconciliation and they don't, they don't have it. So, you know, there's a big need in the world. So what went wrong? There was disobedience and that disobedience has consequences and it creates a need 
in the world. So that's the first two. So we come from, so to recap, we come from God who created everything in harmony. But there is disobedience and that has consequences that creates a need in the world. Okay, that's six. Hopefully you're getting it and going along with me. So is there hope? This one is two, two of them. A promise made, so right hand on the heart, left hand up here, like a scout's honor, or you know, if you were in court, something like that. So promise made, God made a promise to the world that he would, he would restore creation and that he would help rid the world of all this sin and brokenness. And there was a promise kept. So promise kept. So this is, um, so this is, you touch both palms of your hands. I think it's sign language for, um, I want to say sign language for Jesus. I'm not sure, but touching both the palms of your hands. So promise made when God went into the world, he said, hey, I will not leave you without a witness. And when he sent his son, Jesus Christ, into the world to die for the sins of the world, he had a promise that was made. And Jesus kept that promise by dying on a cross for our sins and raising to new life for our rescue. This is a rescue, and that's the reason that we can have hope, because God made a promise he would not leave us without a witness, and he sent his son Jesus to die for us in keeping that promise. Okay, so from the top, with, with me again. So, you know, where we come from? God, in the beginning, created the entire world in harmony, but we disobeyed, <laughs> we, have, we disobeyed, and that disobeyed has consequences, and that creates a need in the world. But there is hope in the fact that God promised that he would not leave his creation without a witness. And he sent his son, Jesus Christ, into the world to die and to be raised up for new creation. So that we can have hope in the promise that was kept by God. Okay, last one. So, what does the future hold? The future holds that all things are new. So God, in his word, says that he's going to make all things new. And that we are going to be forever with God. So if you remember this, the start, you say, God created all things. At the end, you say, you say, we are, all things are new and we're forever with God. So the first one, you point up to God and you start at the top and go down to the bottom. The last one, all things new, you start at the bottom and go to the top and then we're forever with God. So with all things new, yeah, again, God is creating all things new. He's making everything lovely. Um, even though this world is very broken right now, it's not going to always be like this. And God's going to create a new heaven and a new earth for us to dwell on eternally. And so that we can be forever with God, not only in, in the new heaven, but also in the new earth that is our final destination for eternity. So this is a biblical worldview. Now that you've got it, and you're probably trying to process, understand, and remember all the hand motions, I think the hand motion is just a fun way to remember it. And this is for other people just as much as it is for you to understand what the Bible taught, teaches about this stuff. You know, in the beginning, God created the entire world in perfect harmony. There was no sin, there was no death, there was no disease, everything was perfect. But then man decided to disobey God, and he ate of the tree of the good, knowledge of good and evil, Adam and Eve. And because of that, there was consequences for their sin, and they were thrown out of the Garden of Eden, and they were continually in need. They had to go and work for their food, and there was a lot of sin and brokenness and strife throughout the world. But God promised us that he would not leave us without a witness, and he said that the, that the son of their seed would eventually crush the heel of Satan. And that is exactly what Jesus did in keeping that promise. He sent Jesus was sent to the world as a, as a man, was, lived a perfect life, and died a perfect death. And so three days later, he raised up from the dead, just like he promised, so that he could, come, so that he could create a new heart in us, so that we could trust in him and have eternal life with him. So when God creates all things new in the new creation, he makes everything into his perfect and wonderful place, we can be forever with God in heaven and the new earth as our eternal destiny as we trust in God for everything in our life. So that is the four worldviews 
with a complete with the hand motion. So I'll go over it one more time after I say a brief word, but again, this is, this is a benefit for you, something that you can just practice on, maybe show to others, get up from before you church, say something like that. I think it's, it's fun. So again, we come from God who created all things in perfect harmony, but we decided to disobey and that <laughs> disobey and that disobey has disobedience has consequences and creates a need in us. But God promised that he would come into the world and send a savior and Jesus Christ fulfilled that promise by dying and raising again so that all things can be created new and we can be forever with God. I pray this was an encouragement and a help and a blessing to you. Let me pray for you. God, I thank you for this day, for all that you do for us, for how much you love us, and how you show yourself glorious in your word and in the world for all to see. And I pray that this message would be showing that too to whoever's watching. It's in Christ's name that I pray. Amen. Have a great day.